And it is former Cowboy Tony Casillas back in the open mic tonight, a busy man these days, part of the uh, USA Football Safety Initiative, among yep. other things. And you and your wife, Tamara, are the honorary co-chairs for the uh, Coleman Dallas Race for the Cure in mm -hmm. October. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But let's start with some football. The Cowboys 0-3 uh, in this preseason. First of all, nobody ever cares about the records in the pre. Do you have any any, any <laughs> recollection of, of your preseason football, your exhibition football as a player? You know, the only recollection I have is that I was glad it was over. <laughs> yeah, right. So my point is it's very meaningless. Yes, there's some things you want to accomplish, the continuity with the offense, a lot of question marks you may have going into the season, but never to put too much credibility in the preseason. And we all know this. It only counts when in, when the first game of the season comes around when they play the New York Giants. Romo, uh, and this may count for a little something, the fact that the first team offense mm -hmm. found some success. Romo, 5 of 8 against the Vikings with those two touchdown passes. What did you think of his uh, performance in uh, against Minnesota? Well, I thought it was vintage. I, I thought he, he utilized the receivers, he ran the football well. I thought the pass to Terrence Williams where Terrence uh, uh, extended that play to a six-yard touchdown was was. Uh, very impressive, and at the very in the in the red zone where he improvised and rolled around, found his receiver. Uh, was that luck? Got lucky in the end zone, and lucky right. Whitehead. Right. So uh, that's vintage Tony. Tony's going to be fine. I, I, again, I, I think the question mark is how well this team is going to run the football during the regular season because we know number nine. If he stays healthy and he's able to get some type of balance, he will be. A, he will have a terrific year. Yeah, you wonder if, and Romo last year almost quietly had the, the best year of his career. Absolutely. Led the league in passer mm -hmm. rating. If it's the perfect intersection now of Romo's mental capability, mm -hmm. he's figured the game out, and he still has enough physical ability left yeah. now, that, especially that he's healthy to begin the season. I think so. I think that's very important for him. And, again, last year it was all predicated on the fact that they were able to run the football, which gave them balance. And he didn't have to throw the ball 40, 50 times. I think he's healthy, healthy this year. I think that they want to run the football as much as they did last year because they don't want to get in that mode where he has to throw the football and try to get him – uh, the risk of getting injured because we know if number nine goes down, then that's going to be the question mark going into the rest of the season if that does happen. Yeah, let's talk more about the running game. Uh, last night, Joe Randall scuffled a little bit back there, five carries, 15 yards. But this guy, McFadden, four for 37, showed a little bit of a burst. I, when I was at camp, Tony, and I know you followed camp throughout, McFadden was hurt, and he's kind of a forgotten man. People mm -hmm. have assumed this is going to be Joseph Randall's job. I think McFadden kind of wanted to stake his claim, and that makes it pretty interesting if this veteran can finally do some things behind this line. I think my concern, Mike, is that this is Joseph Randall's job to take and keep, and he hasn't really done anything to, to show that I want the job. And I know I like Darren McFadden. I like that he's a former number one pick, and he was at Oakland and just kind of went through that. Uh, the grind of being on the bad football team behind this offensive line. So I think if he stays healthy and he's running with a lot of vigor, that's going to be the question mark. But I still don't like the notion of putting someone, anyone behind this offensive line and expect them to have success running the football. That is a concern for me. Yeah, and I think it's a concern for Jason Garrett, too, because he obviously loved the Marco Murray. Absolutely. Not just How can you not? Because of the numbers, but the way the guy could block. He was a very versatile and, back. And that's, when a great, and that's a great point. A lot of, you got to put value in a running back that not only can run the football, but can sit back there and pick up blitz. And when you can trust someone like DeMarco Murray that, that has done that, there's a lot of credibility. There's a lot of value that goes in that. And more importantly, there's a lot of trust. Let's go to Des Bryant now. Uh, not playing again last night, the tender hamstring. Uh, the training camp theme for Des has been about the passion, whether it can be counterproductive. The fighting with teammates and other teams, feuding with sports riders. Do you worry about Des's focus at all? I don't. I love, I love Des Bryant. I've loved him since day one. Yes, he's kind of in the crawl through the, the maturation as, a, as an athlete, but he is, he has that big, now that right there is not, a, not very smart. I think when you, as a wide receiver, yes, you get into the the, the, the quarrels of, of talk and smack, but right there, you got to be able to, to hone that in. And dunking the football in practice, that's part of being immature. And hopefully he'll realize that. But guess what? Isn't there? Isn't that a penalty for the regular season for dunking the dunking the football? Excessive celebration. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So Jimmy yeah. Graham, he that's a Jimmy Graham rule. But I have no problem with his passion. He has got to stay healthy. He has to stay on the field. And I think for him, it's very infectious. This team feeds off a guy like Des Bryant, and unfortunately, he's a skill position guy. There's been a lot of talk about the Rolling Stone article that came out about Des, and 
it's easy to forget the kind of challenges he faced growing mm -hmm. up, and I'm not saying it's an excuse for any kind of behavior for the rest of your life, but reading that and being reminded of that, it's amazing the guy's gotten to the point where he has. Well, I think you really understand the man, Des Bryant, once you find out where his grassroots is, and I, I think it, when you read things like this, it's like shame on us for making a judgment on him, but that's the, that's the landscape of the NFL, the, the, the rise uh, the rise through the NFL and the ranks is what you're, you know, where you're from. And I think it gives a good perspective. I don't think it's a hall pass for being immature and making mistakes because there's a lot to be said when they pay you $70 million and $45 million guaranteed. You have to grow up. You have to make uh, right decisions. But there is a lot there to Des Bryant that people don't know. And I think this is a very insightful article of people that will, will read and really know a lot about the man. Let's go to defense now. The Cowboys lose Orlando Scandrick for the year, so it seems like uh, more than ever the key to the defensive success, pressure on the quarterback. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the secondary a little bit in a minute, but let's start with the, uh, the pressure players. And this Randy Gregory, you know, it's just the preseason, but three sacks in three games. It seems to be a little bit of something there with this kid. I think this is, some, this is what the – when they drafted uh, Randy Gregory, they would hope that he would have this type of spark. Now, it is preseason, but I like the fact that he can come off the edge. He's very athletic. And not too many rookies come in and have this type of success during the preseason. And I think for the Cowboys to be able to counter with, uh, with every, with the Greg Hardy and some of the other players they have with that platoon of players, Randy Gregory has got to have a solid year. And I think put him out there and again, make him a threat. That's the most important, important thing about having a great defensive line. We've heard a lot about the improved depth on this defense. It's going to be tested now because of the injury to Skandrick. It's finally time for Mo Claiborne to either show that he can contribute consistently or or not because they need it more than ever now. Well, this is a question mark for Mo Claiborne because they drafted him in 2012 and expected high expectations. He's been injured, and that's what happens. Orlando Skander gets injured before the season, and he's got to step up. He's got to step up and show that there is some fruition to why they drafted him. A lot of pressure on Mo Claiborne, but for this team to – to be able to take that step and show, solidify the depth, I think he has to have a tremendous year. Now, I will say this. I do like, again, the platoon of defensive players there because it can take a lot of pressure off, a lot of, pre a lot of pass rush, and if they can play man-to-man, -man, I think it molds very well for this defense. Yeah, you played on a defense that uh, Could had bring a it. You defensive bring it. Uh, line rotation back in the day. Uh, let's, let's spend just a few seconds on special teams. Not a real sexy subject, but and a lot of the guys who are playing special teams now won't make the team. With that said... <laughs> Uh, again, last night they give up a big play, and it's a cliche, but these are this is the, the, the aspect of the game that can make or break your football team. Absolutely. So far, it's looked really bad well, in the preseason. Well, fill position, but again, I'm not going to I'm gonna tap the brakes and, uh, you know, Cowboy Nation, settle down, because I think last year they brought this point up. I think a lot of the, the, the things that they did are, can be corrected. Uh, guys not being in their lane. But special teams certainly has is, is, is been very porous this, this, you know, this preseason. I tell you what I'm really looking forward, Mike, is how the dynamic of all of a sudden moving the ball back and kicking it from the 15-yard line, the PAT. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of strategy now. It's not, and all of a sudden, it's not an automatic gimme. Dan, with Dan Bailey, it might be about as close to that as with any, <laughs> with any kicker. Uh, let's close with, with a word or two about the uh, Coleman Dallas mm -hmm. Race for the Cure, October 17th at North Park Center. You and your wife, Tamara, are honorary co-chairs. She has such a great story to tell as a survivor. What's this experience already been like for you guys? It's been very humbling. Uh, just the people with Susan G. Coleman and finding out what people uh, that, that have been affected with breast cancer. And, and you know my wife. She's, she's my hero. You know, she's a stud. I mean, she can go out there and give her stories. So we're looking forward to the very... Very, uh, very happy to be part of this organization. Yeah, it'll be a great day. And you saw information on how you can uh, can sign up. Go to fox4news.com. And oh, by the way, you look like you're in shape. How many miles? You're getting you, ready? How many miles you putting in there, big boy? Or you can't. No, I'm run talking that about day, you. Right? Yeah, well, I'm broadcasting uh, the. Oh, event from that here day, to the so studio. Well, from no, I'll, I'll be out there. Okay. But wouldn't be. Fair I'm gonna hold for you me. up on that. Wouldn't yeah. be fair for me to outrun the pack <laughs> that day. I want other people to feel good about. Appreciate themselves. that. All right, Tony Casillas, always great having you in with us. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike.